I'm glad to have you here. My name is Chase. Uh, I'm a pastor here and excited for what we are walking into. I, for me, for whatever reason, I feel like the new year starts today, okay? Like, I know we have had nine, this is the ninth day of the year, but for whatever reason, like, I don't feel like last week happened, okay? I'm kind of like just forgetting about that. I'm ready to start now, okay? And if you don't know something about me, I like to get excited about Jesus, <laughs> and I like to get excited about the church, and I'm excited about this year and what's going to happen. I told our volunteers this morning, I am pumped for the next like five to 12 weeks in this series that we're doing. Um, I'm excited for what God's doing and what he's going to do at River's Edge, but I'm just, I think, I think this is going to be the most fun and the greatest conversations that I've ever got to preach. I've been thinking about this for a long time, and, and I'm excited to kind of put it and package it together as we go. So I'm, I'm looking forward to today as well. Uh, what I've noticed in my life over many years is... Uh, I think that churches and pastors and Christians and just people in general have overcomplicated Christianity. Would you agree, maybe? Yeah. Can, I, can I share maybe a little bit of why? I think Jesus offers this beautiful, glorious, simple life for us to follow after. And somewhere along the way, Churches and Christians and people began to take this wonderful thing God has for us and say, that's really good, but don't forget you need to add this and add that and add this and add that and add this. And over the years, uh, many years since Jesus came on this earth and kind of set a way for us to live, I think we've complicated things. And, and I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel like my faith, I could describe as busy and difficult and complicated and stressful. It's something that I want to do right and I strive to do right, but I don't ever seem to actually do it right. Am I right? <laughs> you ever feel that way? And, and oftentimes I think about just different places and things in life along with my faith, and I'm like, this can't be how God intended it to be. Like God there's no way God intended marriage to be like this, or there's no way that God intended this to look like that. There's no way that God intended sleep to be like this. Like, babies should sleep more, right? There's no way that raising an infant should be this hard. <laughs> That's the season of life I currently am. Sometimes if, if I were to describe my life, I bet you some of the words would be similar to how you could describe your life. Let me try it for a second. You don't have to raise your hand, but just nod with me, okay? So just practice over here so I can tell this is your, I agree. Let's see yours. Let's see yours. No, nope, these guys don't agree. Okay, <laughs> Let, let's try. All right, online, just give me a little. All right, let me try. I sometimes could describe my life like this. I bet you could too. Um, busy. Mm-hmm. And oftentimes we kind of wear that as a, as a prideful thing. Like, I'm busy, which means I'm important. No, you're just busy, Chase. You're just busy. How about this? Stressful. Come on. I know it's stressful to nod your head, but you describe your life like that. Maybe you describe your life or even your faith as complicated. Maybe you describe your life as kind of like, like, like a roller coaster. Like there's ups, but there's definitely downs, and then it's up and down. You ever feel that way about your life? up and down. How about this? I used to kind of make fun of people that would, would describe their life like this, but over the last couple years, maybe three or four years, there's places in my life where I would say this, anxious? You ever feel that way about your life? Full of anxiety? I now know how you feel. <laughs> I've been there. How about lacking peace, lacking purpose? Have you ever just felt like you're just surviving? Come on, nod your head. You've been there. There's been seasons in your life where like, I don't know, just surviving. Oftentimes, if you ask me how I've been doing these last 11 months, my answer is normally the same. If you say, Chase, how are you? I say, I'm alive. Because <sighs> sometimes that's like, like, that's what I feel. It's like, I'm just alive. Like, that's as best as you're going to get, okay? I'm breathing, and I'm grateful to be breathing. Breathing is a good thing. Nod your head. <laughs> Are you happy to be breathing? Like, it's pretty cool. I like it. I'd like to do more of it for a long time. 
But sometimes I feel like that's as best I can do. I'm alive. I'd love to say I'm truly living. I'd love to say I'm living the best life. But oftentimes I just kind of feel like I'm just alive. And the thing is, you and I, as we listen to that list of words, some of us in the room are followers of Jesus. We're, we're Christians, and yet we still feel that way in this life. And I believe that Jesus intended us to live a better way. I believe that the life that Jesus has for you and wants for you and has for me and wants for you is better than that. I don't think this is the way that Jesus intended for our life to look. And so what we're going to do today is, is going to set up where we go over the next few weeks in our series. And what I really just want to do is I want to share with you moments in time where Jesus talked about the life he has for you. And I want you to listen to the words he uses versus the words we just talked about. Like, like take this one, for instance. John chapter 10, verse 10 says, the thief, this is Jesus speaking, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy, but I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Mmm, I like that. The word abundant in the original language, remember the, the New Testament is written in Greek, and so in the original language, the word used there, it means super abundant or superior in quantity or even superior in quality. Ooh. He came to give us life that is super abundant in quantity and, I would say, and in quality superior in quality. I think the life that Jesus has for you, it's super abundant in quantity because it's everlasting. Christ offers you a life that can last forever, a concept that you and I can't fully get our minds around. But it's also, I believe, meant to be a superior in quality life. The Amplified Bible, the translation says this same verse this way, it says, I came that they may have life and enjoy it. Not just be alive, but enjoy it and then have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. Do you feel like your life is overflowing with enjoyment, superior in quality? Can you honestly describe your life like that? Some of you may be. Man, some of you are living your best life. Some of you are enjoying it. Some of you are in a season where it's like, yeah, like this is great. But I think more often than not, many of us would be like, ah, that's not the word I would use. Let me share another verse. Um, John 14, 27. Here's Jesus. He says, I'm leaving you with a gift. I'm like, yeah, give me a gift. A peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give, so don't be troubled or afraid. Jesus says, I have something to offer you. It's a peace of mind and a peace of heart, so don't be troubled or afraid. You can have peace in your mind and peace in your heart, so don't be troubled or afraid. And I think for many of us, we live the opposite. We are troubled and afraid, wishing we could have peace of mind and peace of heart. Another time Jesus talks about peace in John 16, he says, I've told you all this, that you have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I've overcome the world. So in the same breath, Jesus says, you have peace in me. And yes, I know that in this world, you will have trials and sorrow and suffering and sadness and problems and pain and loss. You will deal with that. But I'm telling you something. I'm giving you a gift and it's peace. It's peace. Peace of mind and peace of heart. So even though that trials and sorrow is happening all around you, you don't have to be troubled or afraid because you have a peace inside of you. Do you feel like right now in your life, you have peace of mind in your thinking and peace in your heart? In the midst of what I've called these last two years, the COVID craziness, in the midst of the COVID craziness, do you feel at peace in your mind and heart? Or do you feel troubled and afraid? 
Now, I'm not here to make a stance on you should get this or not get that or wear this or don't wear that or go here or don't go there. I'm not trying to say any of that. I'm saying we're all dealing with this COVID thing in a different way. It's impacting all of us a little bit differently, and we're all dealing with it in our own life. But I'm asking you, as you deal with it, as you go through this craziness, do you feel troubled and afraid? Are you living in fear struggling with, with your mind, with all the thoughts and all the worries and all the anxiety, or do you feel a peace in your mind and a peace in your heart? Or maybe take this verse. Let's kind of listen to something else Jesus said. In Matthew chapter 19, it says that Jesus looked at them and intently said this, humanly speaking, that is impossible. But with God, everything is possible. Amen. Say it again, Chase. Humanly speaking, that's impossible. But with God, everything is possible. I want to ask you something. Do you live your life as a follower of Jesus and believe that the one that you're praying to can do anything he wants, has the power to overcome any obstacle in your life, to do the impossible? Or is he just the God of the impossible? That, that's in the Bible. All those guys back in the day, yeah, they got to see Jesus do some cool stuff. Walked on water, water to wine. Hello. It's always my favorite one. I don't even like wine, but I always think that's funny, right? His very first miracle. I grew up in a, oh, never mind. I don't even go there. All right. <laughs> God of the impossible. Nothing is impossible with God. Everything is possible with God. When you pray, do you present your problems to God as things that won't be overcome? Hey, God, I... I know you can't really do much about this, but I just want to share how I'm feeling. What? That's not the God Jesus says. That's not the God he's talking about. He says, you got marriage issues. You got relational issues. There, there's been some problem that has separated you from somebody, and there's a relationship issue there. He says, I can bring reconciliation to any relationship because I'm a God of the impossible. For you, it looks impossible, yes. For me, everything is possible. You're dealing with a financial struggle right now that you look at it and you say, it doesn't make sense. The math doesn't work. I'm bringing in this. This is going out. I can't do it anymore. It's impossible. Humanly speaking, God says, I'm, I'm a God. Hello over here of the impossible. Everything is possible through me. You got a health crisis that, that you just have thought forever it will always be the way it's always has been. Because humanly speaking, it's impossible. All I know is what Jesus says. He says, with man, some things are impossible, but with God, everything is possible. Do you really believe that God can fix, change, or solve, or improve? Do you really believe that God can free you from your addiction, restore your broken relationship, renew your health, bring salvation to that person? Do you really believe that you serve and worship a God of the impossible? Jesus believes that. Or how about one, one last thing Jesus says? And it's really hard for me to get excited and have the hyper energy that I always have when I read this because you just kind of have to slow down. So, so let me read this to you. Then Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Everybody say rest. Even when you said it, you said it nice. You weren't like, rest. <laughs> You're all like, rest. Mm. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart. Wait, you will also find rest for your soul. My yoke is easy to bear. The burden I give you is light. Hmm. Let me reread a couple of those words to you because these words, I believe, are words that you're like, yep, I'll take that. <laughs> I'll trade whatever I'm going through right now for those. The word rest, I believe when he says rest, he says it twice. The first time I think it's about this physical rest, I do think that he can offer us a rest where we're like, ah, like relaxation. But he also says a few other words. He says humble and gentle. Hmm. Then he comes back to this word and he says soulful rest. When I think of the most restful place, I'm sorry, I think of this, a lazy boy. My feet are always kicked up and I'm always leaning back when I am thinking of how to be restful. Most of the time there's a bear's game on. Okay, well actually that's anxiety, Never mind. Um, 
<laughs> but that's just me. I, I love the reclined position. Oh. Celebration cinemas, best cinemas. Why? You can recline. <laughs> this is it. Physical rest for me. That, that's what I think of. So when I think of soulful rest, I just picture that not only happening on the outside, but it's happening on the inside. Where your rest, your soul kind of takes a, a pause and goes, <sighs> soulful rest. Look about these words, easy and light. Now, I started the message listing some words like stressful, complicated, overwhelming, roller coaster, up and down, anxiety filled, lacking peace, lacking purpose, complicated. And then Jesus says, rest, easy, light, soulful rest, peace filled with a God who can do the impossible. Which one's right? Most of us would probably describe our life with the first list, right? But Jesus says, I came to offer you this. And either Jesus is lying and this is not possible, or we're doing something wrong. Maybe there's a better way. Maybe there's a better way to live. Maybe there's a better way for life. Maybe there's a better way for faith. Maybe over the years and centuries since Christianity has been around, since Jesus walked this earth, we've overcomplicated, we've added to it, we've made it stressful. And Jesus is like, what are you doing? I came to give you rest, a soulful rest. The world offers a way to live. And they say, hey, here's a better way. Uh, how about this? Um, YOLO. You only live once, so just do whatever makes you happy, whatever pleases you. That's a way that the world offers as the best way to live. Just do whatever makes you happy because you only live so long. So if it pleases you, do it. If it makes you happy, go for it. So people live for pleasure. That's all that matters they pursue pleasure, they live for pleasure, but they find their life has no purpose. Well, there's other ways that the world says, maybe if you sought after this, you will find satisfaction. So they say it's all about stuff. Just get more and more stuff. Work hard, play hard, and to play hard means you have to have toys to play. So work hard and get more toys. Why have one when you can have two? Just give me more things. Let me acquire more stuff for happiness and satisfaction is found in stuff. And we all know that's not true. I mean, there are some things that would make me happy. A hot tub, folks, would make me happy. But it won't satisfy. That was a joke. I was hoping to be like, oh, you want a hot tub? I have one. If you have one in your backyard you're not using, you want to give it away. I'm just saying. There's some temporary satisfaction and, and happiness in things, but we know that stuff will never satisfy us in our deepest longings and needs. Now, there's others that say, okay, well, maybe not happiness or pleasure or stuff, but, but if, you just, if you just live for you, you are the most important being on the planet. The world should revolve around you. So elevate yourself. Get more likes and more follows and, and more friends on Instagram and social media. Just get more influence. Become more popular. Work your way up the ladder. And when you get there, you'll have all the friends you need. You'll have all the popularity you want. You will be famous, and then you will be happy. But we know that, ha that pleasure and stuff and even just living for yourself and the focus of, of getting there and having influence, that won't ever truly satisfy you. Now, I want to just say clearly, I don't think that making more money or having stuff or, or getting influence and gaining popularity and working your way up the ladder, I don't think any of that's bad. Look throughout the Bible, you'll see some really godly people that had lots of stuff, lots of money, lots of influence. But if that's what you're living for, you're missing it. If that's what you're striving after, if that's your goal in life, then you are going to find that you will have everything you want and you'll be missing what you really need. 
You can have all that you ever want and still be lonely, still be unsatisfied, still have no peace and no rest and still feel like something is missing. In Proverbs 14, it says, there is a way that appears to be right, but in the end, it leads to death. It seems right. It seems like it's working. If you look at their Instagram, they look happy. They look like they slept all night. I want that. So I'll just do what they do. It looks like it seems right. But there was a place where Jesus said, he said, "Um, what do you benefit if you gain the whole world, but you lose your soul? If you're living for that, for gaining everything this world has to offer, but you lose your soul, what benefit is that to you? There has to be a better way. There has to be a way to live that wasn't meant to be stressful and complicated and heavy and hard and difficult. And I believe there is a better way, and I believe his name is Jesus. And and I want to wrap up with this section of scripture where Jesus is speaking, where he tells us that his way of life is the way. In John 14, it says, don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. The better way starts with trusting in Jesus. There's more than enough room in my father's home. If it were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am. And you know the way to where I am going. And I love Thomas. He's like, uh, nope. (laughs) You say, we know, we say, we don't know. Don't know, we know. What are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. So he says, no, we don't know, Lord. We have no idea where you're going, so how do we know the way? And then Jesus tells him this this line, this famous thing Jesus says, that, that if you've been around the church and around Christianity, you've heard this line before. It's super powerful. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one can come to the Father except through me. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. The better way is the way of Jesus. And what I'm trying to to set up for the next few weeks is that if we would look at the way of Jesus, the life of Jesus, we would find the better way. See, I think oftentimes Christianity focuses on the teachings, which is important, They focus on all this stuff you have to do and don't do and you need to do this and don't do that and look this way and don't look that way. And we miss out on the life that Jesus has for us. We, we, We miss out on the way that Jesus lived. And I think there's something very powerful about that. I mean, the reason I became a pastor and the reason that we're going to sit in this series for a few weeks is because I wanted to help people simply follow Jesus. I didn't become a pastor to stand on the stage and talk, although I love that. I didn't become a pastor to wear a suit and tie. Thank goodness I don't have to. Actually, when I told my dad I want to be a pastor, I was like 18. He said, all right, let's go get you a suit jacket. I was like, why? He goes, well, you have to have one of those. Oh, maybe I don't want to be a pastor. (laughs) And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying, like, that's not me. I didn't become a pastor so I could do funerals and do weddings. I didn't become a pastor even to to teach people how to dive deep into scripture and and understand the Greek and the Hebrew and to open it up and to, to really remember. I didn't become a pastor for that, although I think the Bible is really, really, really important to understanding our faith. I didn't become a pastor so I could teach you the history of the church or teach you the in depth and all this. I became a pastor because I believe that there is a simple way that Jesus has called us to live. And if we would just look at Jesus, if he would be the foundation of our life, I believe that is the better way. So how do you simply follow Jesus? Well, that's what this series is gonna be about. We're going to look at the life of Jesus, who he was, what he did, what he said, how he lived, and we're going to say, do that. 
I'm going to invite you to, to join us on a journey where we, we take a look at the creator of life himself, and we take a look at Jesus, who, who God says is the exact representation of God. So if we want to get to know God, we just look right at Jesus. We're going to take a look at Jesus. And when he says something, we're going to say, should we say that too? When he does something, we're going to say, okay, how do we do that? When he teaches something, we're going to say, okay, how do we obey that? And when we look at the person that he was, we're going to figure out how we can imitate it. We're simply going to follow after Jesus. And my hope and prayer is something I've thought a lot about and, and, and have been praying a lot about and I'm excited for the next 12 weeks to talk about is my desire is to help every one of us follow the way and listen to the truth so that we can experience the life that God has for us. I believe there is a better way. A life of peace and humility and rest and joy and grace and enjoyment and satisfaction and abundance in everlasting eternal life that Jesus intends for us to live. Not a life free of struggles, but a life where you can have peace and joy even in the midst of those struggles because of Jesus. There is a way. Jesus is the way that will go with you through everything in life. And I believe that the life of a Christian is a life that looks at Jesus and learns about Jesus and simply lives and loves like Jesus. It's simple. Follow Jesus. Don't add to it, don't complicate it, but don't underestimate it because it's powerful. There's a story, it's kind of cool. Uh, Jesus, a crowd comes to him and, and they say, hey, Jesus, what does God require of us? Interesting. Because many of them that were asking, like didn't even believe that Jesus was who he said he was. So they're like, hey, what, what does God want from us, teacher? And Jesus says, well, let me tell you what God requires of you. Believe in the one who he sent. And if you know who that is, it's Jesus. The answer is always Jesus. <laughs> so Jesus tells them, hey, you want to know what God requires of you? Believe in me. I'm here. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Believe in me. And you're here today, I believe, because you're sitting there wondering, what does God want from me? For some reason, you showed up at River's Edge at 11 o'clock, and I don't think you came because we have the best coffee in town, because we don't. <laughs> But you came because, because there's something inside of you that's saying, okay, what does God want for me? How does God want me to live? I, I want to live a life that, that, that honors him. I want to live a life that pleases him. I, I want to do better. That's why you study the Bible. That's why you pray. That's why you go to church. That's, that's why you do that. You, you kind of want to know, what does God want from me? Or you got dragged along here because someone thought you might be interested in knowing what does God, God want for you? And I believe the answer is the same, 2022. What does God require of you? What does God want from you? To believe in the one who he sent. Believe that Jesus came, that he died, and that he came back to life. Believe that he is the son of God. And by believing, you receive forgiveness of your sins past, present, future. All the mistakes and failures and mess ups, forgiveness of it, they're gone like yesterday is gone. And by believing, you receive life that, that actually starts right now in a relationship with Jesus and lasts forever. By believing, you receive forgiveness and life. And so we believe and we receive. And then I believe we let God lead. We believe and receive and then let Jesus lead your life. It's simple. That's the, the foundation of Christianity is believe in Jesus 
Receive the life he has for you. And then let Jesus lead. Simply follow Jesus. So I want to invite you into a journey over the next few weeks where we do just that. We calm down, we take a deep breath, and we look at Jesus. And we see how to live by looking at the way and listening to his truth. And I believe we'll receive and get to experience the life that he intends for us. So I want to do something that that I call old school because they did it when I was a kid. I want to invite you for just a time of reflection to just close your eyes and, and to bow your heads. That's what they always said. Bow your heads and close your eyes. And don't be like me when I was a kid who bowed his head but got his eyes everywhere so he could see what was going on. No need to sleep with one eye open right now, okay? Just bow your heads and close your eyes as a moment to reflect. And and what I feel like I I need to do in this moment is is give you an opportunity. If you're in the room or even if you're listening online, I want to give you the opportunity to recognize that today is could be the greatest day of your life. If you've never believed in Jesus and received the life that he has for you, today is that day. That's why you were brought here. I believe that God works in in miraculous and mysterious and wonderful and crazy ways. And I believe that God brought you into this room or onto this stream right now for this purpose to hear that you can have a relationship with Jesus that starts now and lasts forever. And God's word says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So I wanna give you the opportunity from your heart to God just to say, God, I know that I've messed up but I believe that you came and died and rose again for me and my sin. And I want to receive forgiveness for my sin and I want to receive life that starts now and lasts forever. And I want you to be the Lord and the leader of my life and I will follow. It's between you and God. Just take that moment as he's drawing you close to respond. And as every head is bowed and every eye is closed, I just want to give you an opportunity to to just, if you did that today for the first time, just throw your hand up real quick so that I can celebrate with you and pray with you. Just real quick, throw your hand up. Today was the day that you said, Jesus, I want to follow after you today. Just throw it up real quick. Throw it right back down. And then for the rest of us that are sitting in this room, my my guess is that more hands will, will be raised in this moment. If you would love to have more of a life that's full of rest and peace. A a life that's full of joy and grace. If if you would would like to have the life that Jesus described, would you just throw your hand up real quick? Say, I want more of that in my life. More peace, more joy, more rest. I want to pray over you right now. I I want to invite you to come back the next few weeks as we journey on this together. God, thank you so much for Jesus and the simple way of life that he showed us and the way of life that he described for us. So God, there was people in this place that raised their hand saying, I want that peace, joy, rest, rest for my soul. I want more of that. So so God, I just pray that this week, just specifically this week, those that, that said, I want more of that, that you would show yourself to them in a way that shows them that this is possible, that there is a better way to live. And then I pray that over the next few weeks as, as we unpack what this looks like, Lord, that you would give me the words to speak, not what I want to say, but what you want to say to everyone listening to help them simply follow the way to listen and hear the truth that Jesus has to see. And that we can all experience the life that we were created to live. And for those that made a decision today to, to begin that journey, to follow Jesus for the first time, Lord, my prayer and hope is that you would be the Lord and leader of their life. 
and that you would walk with them and lead them to a life that is amazing and everlasting. We pray all this in your name. Amen.